Hello, good morning, and welcome to Whitey Tower. We don't know what year this is, do we? Don't know what the colour's called. No. Other than it's coming from overseas. The week ahead of us we have, we don't know what year it is, early 90s perhaps, late 80s even, a 928 Porsche GTS, the vehicle. The vehicle is in from overseas as part of a collection for the white detailed treatment. Full safe, wheels off, decontamination stage complete at this point, it's been blown dry um, with the weather outside. It's sort of all hands on deck and I'm a bit out of practice picking up the camera, but this is now where the magic happens. Initially, doesn't look too bad, really. It's a very quirky, angular, different, almost like a concept of its time. This rear window has never been replicated since, I don't think. But flat black in colour. We've had a lot of these through now. With some zoom, you can see the Micromar. I can see where it's been polished in the past. This is what we're not wanting to replicate. The top side of the near side of the wing, it's got some fingerprints here. Scratched fingerprints. You can see the you can see them there. One, two, three. It's a good rub mark down here. This being perhaps the worst mark we've found so far. Just stumbled across that. Good rub marks again on the wing. Series of passes there. Something's been rubbed. This is a massive wing. To reach the middle of the bonnet, there's a lot of leaning over the panel. Funny little tide mark on the passenger door. No, driver's door. Left hand drive. Uh, unsure at this time of the vehicle's history, to be honest, if it's had any restoration work, repair work, with the paint depth gauge, obviously we'll be taking some readings and trying to work out what's what. Plenty of hazing on the light clusters also. See this central panel is actually sort of a bit loose, it's a bit proud. Top of the spoiler, remnants of water spots there, look. Flat black shows everything. May have found a burn through on the edge there. Oh no, it's polish. Right to the door. Ah, oh, is this it, Terry, in the roof, roof rail? Yeah. Yeah, burn through there. All down there, really, we wanna watch that. Yeah. It's gone here as well, look. It's, you can see through it. Oh, I think all along there, that, all this is suspect then. Well, every edge you probably have to millimetre yeah. tape over. Yeah. There's a bad mark, but well, that's been touched over. That's yeah. a touch up. Oh, that's bad as well. Mm -hmm. God, this camera weighs a ton. <laughs> Very bitty and broken around the handle. There's contact, there's keys, there's rings, there's... Uh, weird, a weird cluster of buffer trails. Fingers crossed we can manipulate the paint to work along to work with us as opposed to flat black being uh, a massive headache. Sometimes you can get lucky, there's various combinations and methods to resort to. Initially from a distance it's looking alright, but there's a lot of clarity, a lot of depth, a lot of finish lost, and there's a lot of polishing to do. 
In an attempt to make our life easier, there are various areas in the car to remove, starting with the bonnet badge, we can remove the front clusters down here. There are the side repeaters, these are easily removed. We we'll get the wiper blades, they can come off to allow the struts to be polished, perhaps the washer jets, maybe even the spoiler. Using the, uh, the big diffused square lights now as opposed to the handheld spotlight. See how much clarity is being lost by C damage. Right, good luck Terry. Yes. I'm gonna have a, a week off now. Okay, see you later, mate. Any problems? Enjoy. I'll give you a call if I get in a mess. Any problems? This episode unfortunately has taken a change of direction. It's been a long week, um, probably ought to apologize to the customer, really, the customer for not producing and stitching together the full case study as I normally would. Uh, to you, the people, the supporters watching and my patrons, the vlogs have really slowed down one thing after another. The monthly episodes, I believe I'm gonna probably knock on the head, the idea of condensing lots of goings on into one episode seems to be probably doing more harm than good uh, and more difficult than I actually thought it was gonna be. So just a little bit on the Porsche. I'll touch on this again later. This episode is a q and I've not done one for a long time now. It has been a long week. It's been an awkward, delicate job of which, I was joking with Terry that in the week, I almost didn't want to talk to Terry during this week on the Porsche, never mind the camera. So we have to be mentally in a good place to do this and it's shown in the past when I've not been I've been forcing myself and been trying and it just doesn't add up to a nice story uh, so there, the Porsche has been a test of patience but I have to say with everything said and done it's come out the other end looking fantastic running back through a couple of the comments on YouTube pick a couple out I've got screenshots here May at White Details vlog, that Porsche was a four week detail or did I miss here? No, it was a week's detail, but I perhaps said in for a week's detail as opposed to a four week detail, that would be crazy. Kyle Bratton on vlog 42. Jim, quick one, which refining polish do you use the most? It may vary, but on the most part, Sonax Perfect Finish or this is Gion Prime. Primer? Prime. Primer. On the Porsche, actually, it was a good in, it was a good test. The perfect finish it just would not finish down. Micro marring, it was hazy, it was cloudy, and stupidly, it took us perhaps two panels each on the refining process to realise this. We didn't put a light to it. I had to backtrack, start again. One of the complications of the car, it's so soft and so delicate as to how you approach it and polish it, cut it, refine it. But Gion Primer, it's watery makeup and very very fine characteristics was the answer, luckily. On vlog number 16 from a few months back now, probably this time last year. David, awesome job. What are you using on the windscreens? Cutting compounds, clean all up. That would have been cerium oxide. Cerium oxide with a rayon glass polishing disc, either on the rotary or the DA, is gonna help to remove oxidation, etchings, and to an extent, very, very fine scratches from the wiper. I've never successfully, I've never put enough time into scratch removal on glass. It's extremely hard surface to work with. But on the most part, cerium oxide is just as a cleaning pass to freshen the glass up more than what a cleaner will, obviously, or a hand polish. Adrian Chan, where is the Mercedes 190E vlog? Yes, there was a delay in the editing side of things for the Mercedes, so click up here now in the top corner, you'll see a flash up or it's in the link to the description of the video down below. I am your future 808, a week ago comments, more vehicles and less random and less chit chat please. So again, the monthly episodes, I'm struggling to piece them together and actually work out what I want from them. So perhaps they will be knocked on the head. Uh, user profile called Demolition Guy in video. The bloat's obsessed with filming himself. That is what tends to happen on vlogs, I'm afraid. 
Stu S on the Aston Martin DBS Carbon Edition of Vlog 54. What does IPA mean, please? So during the polishing process, uh, the panel's been cut, not yet been IPA, waiting on refining, is what I'd normally say. IPA is or IPA is isopropyl alcohol. I P A. Isopropyl alcohol, this is 99% concentrate from elite car care. It's very rare that neat IPA or even 50-50 IPA with distilled water is used anymore. This, this is Spice Heckler 7010. This is what I'll be using during the correction. The idea of IPA, when you are polishing the bonnet, you've finished cutting, it looks great. The bonnet is holding back. It's holding back some of the residue, it's holding back some of the oil, maybe filler if you're using the filler heavy compound. And IPA alcohol, it's stripping anything off the finish so you're left with a squeaky clean naked base. A lot of the time some of the, the I've done a few factory tours of high-end prestigious manufacturers and they'll be using compounds and refining, refining polishes that are full of filler. They're not using IPA. They look fantastic at the time. Over the course of four weeks, five weeks, four or five washes, the finish then drops back which is why you're left with perhaps the sander marks are more visible now at this point than they were at the point of handover because they were being masked. So IPA, Spice Hacker 7010, you've got to be using it. Ronald Moll on the, on the same episode. Good morning, Jim. I was wondering if you could do a video on how you clean your polishing pads and what do you use? Thank you for your time. Ronnie, nothing special. To be honest, I just use dishwasher soap in a hot basin of water and I'll just massage and release all the polish from the surface of the foam pads. Microfiber pads, I bundle them in the washing machine non-bio detergent on a 40 degree cycle. Allow it to dry naturally, because if you tumble dry them, they can deform uh, in shape slightly, which then you get a vibration on the machine. But certainly before and after each day or each job of using a polishing pad, they will be spurred both with the brush turned on and then the airline, as you've probably seen before, to release the dust. On vlog episode four, well that's going back some now, Mike Beer. Mike Beer. New to the channel and I have a couple of questions. For those that only want to have one polisher, what size would you recommend? You can't, really, honestly. I mean, going back to when I first started, I had a rotary polisher, one machine, but it had interchangeable polishing heads. So I'd use a five inch backing plate, I'd use a three inch backing plate, and then it got to the point where you could use the 30 mil backing plate or the one inch. So one machine, three options. But to try and cover all bases, like in the Porsche, the DAS 6, the Meguiar's G220, lots of the, the smaller DAs now, they are interchangeable with a 5 inch and a 3 inch pad. So that would be your answer, but you could not complete this car with just one 5 inch machine or one 3 inch machine. You could do it with a 3 inch machine, you can get into some of the areas that you couldn't with a 5 inch, but go into the roof of the bonnet, there's a lot of, a lot of surface air to cover. That leads me actually to, nicely to, it, it's amazing how there seems to be a big push today in the industry now for edge work. Lots of the training academies and stuff, people talking about edge work, which is great because it's getting people to do a more thorough job. They're working more wisely, that they're not just bashing the car out with a big five inch pad. They are getting into the very top corners, into the crevices and areas that you can't normally get. So edge work is important. But I saw, I'm not going to name, um, I saw on Instagram a post, when your company gets so big and you've got so many members of staff doing the hands-on work and then doing the marketing and doing the social media, there was uh, a chap polishing the back of a Mercedes and it was on the boot lid area above the chrome strip on a small section no bigger than this with then a little inch there and then a little inch of a boot spoiler on the top. And instantly I saw the picture and I thought, no, that doesn't add up. I read some of the comments and one of the comments a fan actually of my, my own. Would you not be, I took a screenshot. Would you not be better using a three inch option for that area? The image I will show you. I'm not here to start hating or causing new battles, but that inch between the spoiler and the top, that's going to be compromised if you put the big pad over that, it's going to compromise the spoiler. You're not going to get tight into the sides of the Mercedes badge. It just doesn't add up. There's nothing there. They should know better for that. That area, for sure, that is a three inch area to polish and then if not the hybrid for the one inch at the top. So there's no masking tape, there's no protection being done. 
complete wrong use of the polisher and it's perhaps a quick fix but it shouldn't have been posted it shouldn't happen in the first place but the marketing team queried someone asking would they not be better our detailers have years of experience and know, and know exactly what they're doing was the answer it was an eye opener and actually the image has now been deleted from their account Next one, Manuel Muller. Hey Jim, great work as always. Short question, where do you get the microfiber one inch pads for the hybrid? They are sourced from Pristine Detail. There is a discount code on screen now for you to order the one inch or the two inch pads or even the three inch pads if you want them for microfiber cutting from Pristine Detail with a discount code, which I believe is on screen now. Greetings from Germany. Which microfiber pads do you prefer? 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 For the three inch work, the Lake Country uh, microfiber cutting pads, and then, as previously mentioned, Pristine Detail, they are able to source the one inch, two inch smaller versions for the ivory. Why do you use Maguire's three inch gym? I. Maguire shot themselves in the foot going back to needing an array of machines with different size pads and polishes to be able to complete a car. Meguiar's said no, Meguiar's cut stock. They stopped production of the three inch pads and expected you to decorate your living room with a five inch roller. They're not issuing a one inch brush anymore. You can't get into the detail areas. It wasn't adding up, the numbers weren't there. So they cut production of the three inch pad, which left you completely, they had the six inch pad, five inch pad, not gonna sell the three inch pad anymore, which then led me to explore change my approach and try the Lake Country and durability, performance, cutting, price is probably even better. Don't quote me on that, but they're fine. They're, they're brilliant. They, uh, they're used all the time now, the Lake Country ones. On vlog episode 53, which is a 41 year old Aston Martin V8 Vantage, Bruce Lee comments, why didn't you use a clay bar? We did, it just because it, any car that is here at this point after, before polishing, has been clayed. It's an essential part of the decontamination process which has to be made. Just because it didn't feature in the film, well done for spotting that it wasn't there in the footage, but just because it wasn't there doesn't mean it wasn't done. There are hundreds of steps on the process of the white detail that aren't filmed. This week has been an eye-opener for me that running, stopping, getting the camera, repositioning the camera, stopping, starting. It's a lot of work, not only for the editing, but the actual picking up the camera and repositioning to get the shot. Only of course, you can only work with what you've shot. So you have to, if you want to make a conscious effort to make a vlog, you have to keep picking up the camera to get the shot. But this week, I switched off. Right, that's it. It has been a short, sweet episode. Apologies again to the customer of the Porsche who perhaps would like to have had a full 30 minute episode. The vlogs are gonna be quieting down for a bit. There's been a lot of talk on the cars that have been coming in from overseas. The Porsche is another. It's part of a collection and it's the 16th car, 16. 16 cars have been sent overseas. If you think about that for a second, the costs alone, it's quite something. But it's a 928 GTS in, in black Schwartz, which is the flat black. It's done 26,000 kilometers. But for the white detail treatment, which boasts the full major paint correction, full interior wheels off, engine bay protection on all surfaces, the car has very little paint. Those that were following on Instagram during this week would have seen posts. There's a um, the roof lacquered, but the rest of the panels it's single stage, so there's no lacquer or no clear coat. You are polishing and having black transfer onto the pads. But on average, it's about 50 or 60 microns of paint there, which is not a lot. There's evidence of burn throughs in some of the panel edges already. We've got areas there to work around and not make worse. And at the same time, if we're chasing paint perfection, which is impossible on this car, then we have to be conscious and mindful of the fact of, is it worth it? Is it worth compromising even more paint just for the sake of a couple of marks and not wanting to make any damage or burn throughs or go through, strike through the paint ourselves. On a whole, extremely happy with the result. Once we got ahead around the issues of the paintwork and the polishing was out of the way, the wheels, the interior, the rest of the processes 
went kind of well. Monday, Tuesday next week is a new car prep on a Mini Cooper S. And then Wednesday, I'm traveling down to Heathrow for a flight early doors Thursday morning to Sweden. I'm coming to Sweden for a short break, which is well deserved and well overdue, especially after the Porsche. So sorry for waffling. Thank you again though for the support. Uh, stay tuned for future updates. Find us on Instagram if you don't already for updates and behind the scenes. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you aren't already. I will see you again very soon.